Thank you very much. Mr. Grossman, you're recognized for five minutes. There we are, Mr. Pulsifer. Uh, Western Governors delivers an education through competency-based education model. I'd like you to elaborate that a little bit and see what we can do to amend the Higher Ed Act to accommodate that or your opinion of the benefits of it. Uh, sure. You know, uh, over a century ago, we kind of established and codified a credit hour into our system of higher education, uh, and something that started really as a way for faculty to accrue hours and get paid became somehow a measure of learning. Uh, well, competency-based takes a very different approach, which is it tries to keep the standard for learning, meaning the, the proficiency against a particular uh, learning outcome, like that is actually what determines that you've actually uh, developed the competency that's necessary to complete the course. When you design around that model, it allows a couple things I'll just highlight. First and foremost, it allows you to more directly align the learning outcomes with the work. Uh, and that which they need to be readied for. Second, it actually allows you to personalize learning such that an individual can leverage that which they may already be quite skilled in and can move quickly through that, and they can dedicate more time and attention to the things that they need to focus on and, and may have less uh, preparedness in. But at the end of the day, what you can determine with a competency-based approach is that every individual has been assessed and validated proficient against those learning outcomes. A uh, last thing I'd say on this, uh, Representative Grothman, is that competency-based education is not new. Uh, if you talk about any licensure area in medicine, in law, in the practice of nursing, even in accountancies, like all of these individuals have to meet proficiency standards, well, the same can apply in higher education as a practice. It would seem to make common sense that you would uh, uh, focus more on people, what people know, than how long they've been sitting at a desk. Doesn't it seem that way? Yeah, it certainly seems, I often like to say that virtually every one of us who may have gone to a conventional model already experienced personally competency-based education. You can think of that course where you realize that I didn't need to sit through all the lectures, but I had to wait till the end of the term to take the final. What competency-based education allows is the individual, when they actually are ready and can take their assessments and, and pass those assessments, they're done with that course and they can progress. And we've seen that, uh, one, increase the personalization, two, it also reduces the time that students need to actually acquire their degree. Saves some costs, too, right? A, a lot of costs. When a bachelor's candidate can finish their degree program in two and a half years versus four, you're significantly reducing the cost to attain the credential they need. Bingo. Well, we'll, we'll switch over here to Virginia De Generals. Um, uh, there, there's some numbers before me here that even I'm shocked at, and I don't think I could be shocked. It says here among English teachers, there are 97 Democrats for three, every three Republicans, and among health teachers, 99 Democrats for every Republican. I think it's accurate to say in this country, we're divided about 50-50, right, every presidential election, maybe 51-49 or something. Um, overall, 87 Democrats for every 13 Republicans. I'm not a big one on all this diversity stuff, but I do think, say when you're picking out novels for kids to read, and novels a lot of times have a message in them. Uh, you, you would expect about 50-50 uh, as far as English teachers, history teachers, what have you. Um, but it's not that way at all. I, I think that's one of the major reasons why there's such a lack of support for education today among some people. Could you comment on that a little bit uh, as how this happened and what we can do to turn it around? And can we ever be considered to getting a holistic education if we have so many teachers on one side of the ideological spectrum? Could you even have a good school? Well, I'm a product of public education, K through 12, growing up in, in Florida, and I'm happy to say I have absolutely no idea what the partisan affiliation of any single teacher that I had growing up. So I, I, I think one solution would be to create uh, an emphasis in, in the classroom that uh, the, to, on academics and rather than on activism and ensure that teachers are reminded that it's, it's not appropriate to bring in their, their partisan uh, approach to, to the classroom. A, another, another approach would be to um, make the right. teaching profession I, I, welcoming yeah. to people of, of all different political yeah. persuasions. I don't want to cut you off. To me, the problem is, even if you say you're being non-ideological, every novel has a message in it. Right, and if you're a hardcore Democrat, you you want to give the kids a different different message than more of a traditional person. What can we do to get back to 50-50? And again, I'll, I mean, when I went to college, by the way, I remember, you can tell you how old I am, 
I'll, I would say half the teachers of the school had Jordan McGovern buttons on, so I knew what was going on there. But uh, yeah, can you think of any way we can get back to, say, in English literatures, about a 50-50 split here? Again, I think that the teaching profession needs to be welcoming to people of all different perspectives. And when you have an environment right now that encourages teachers to uh, keep secrets from, from parents, there are people of maybe a more conservative persuasion that aren't comfortable with that, and they're not going to want to stay in the teaching profession or join the, the profession. So perhaps if the profession is, is more inclusive of a, a wide range of values and, and includes more conservative values, there, there might be more of a balance. Is there any way the, gentleman, the gentleman's time's expired. <laughs>